Let's go back to the phone lines. We'll talk to Zach next, listening in Orlando, Florida, on the web. Hi, Zach. Oh, hello, Hank. Um, my question is, is how, um, how can Christians minister in both patience and gentleness on social media websites? It seems like a very Christian-hating uh, environment, from what I can tell. Um, like, just people don't seem to be very friendly towards Christians. And how can Christians minister to people who are like this? Yeah, well, remember that a lot of people who are atheists or skeptics have a, a caricature of what a Christian is. And when they meet the real McCoy, oftentimes the caricature is shattered. So I think we testify by our life and our love And if we have the opportunity, we testify by our lips. I never feel compelled to walk around frantically grabbing people by the lapels and saying, brother, are you saved? But I do feel compelled to always be ready to give an answer, a reason for the hope that lies within me with gentleness and with respect. One of my very good friends is an atheist, and he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And really a good family man. I love his wife and his children. I've spent a lot of time with him playing golf. When we're partners, we're pretty much unbeatable, at least in our own minds we are. But we have a different worldview, and I cannot change his worldview. What I can do, though, is always be ready to testify with respect to the reality of of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the reality of the Christian worldview, and if necessary, use words. And so I remember just making a side to this very good friend of mine in a particular heated moment of battle as we we're trying to win a golf tournament together. And it was very interesting. I was talking about the fact that, well, you know, if you take that perspective, you're fatalistically determined because you don't make any choices everything is a function of brain chemistry and genetics. And so we got into a, a little discussion. But look, I don't feel compelled to change his heart because I don't have the power to do that. But I do feel compelled to be ready to give an answer. And, and hopefully the Lord will use a well-reasoned answer. But that ultimately is the province of the Holy Spirit. My responsibility is to be prepared and to do what I do with gentleness and with respect. Yeah, it just comes up a lot, mainly because a lot of the people, a lot of the blogs that I follow, sometimes they post very negative things about Christians or about Jesus in general. And, you know, sometimes I turn a blind eye to them and I feel ashamed about it because, um, you know, I should be standing up for my faith, but I also don't want to get involved in a, you know, you know, in a flame war. Sure. But I mean, what did Jesus say? A student is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you also. And in fact, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So we should expect persecution. I think oftentimes when we fail to recognize or even embrace persecution, we fail to recognize that the church has always been forged in persecution. You go to places like China and you see people who have been imprisoned for over two decades because of their faith and invariably you see that they have been chiseled to find gems in the cauldron of persecution. 